Good morning um, and welcome to Bank of America Stadium. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we appreciate the time and effort and know that your presence um, we don't take for granted. My name is Stephen Drummond. I work with our communications and digital team. Um, today's a great day to be a Carolina Panther. Uh, we're beyond thrilled to introduce our new owner, David Tepper, and usher in a new start um, to Carolina Panthers football. Great opportunity and responsibility comes with being one of the 32 owners in the National Football League. You have a unique platform <clears throat> to not only impact your community, but really have an impact across our world. Um, and Dave really understands that, he gets that. Um, and I can't wait to hear him share with you guys his vision for this team and this entire region. So with that, I'd like to welcome the new owner of the Carolina Panthers, Mr. David Tepper. Hey, thanks, Steve. Do you have socks on today? Not today. Okay, <laughs> just take that. Um, listen, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, you know, it's uh, incredibly exciting, um, great organization, great football organization. And uh, listen, it's a new day for this organization and hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, bigger and better things to come, including uh, Super Bowl championships in the future. So with that, uh, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm open, I'll let uh, Steve Hey, Dave. Good morning. Joe Person with the Charlotte Observer. I know your face. Okay. Right. I don't know if that's a good thing, but yeah. uh, when, when we spoke to you in Atlanta, you said that you needed some more time to evaluate things, and I know it's only been six weeks, but what changes are you looking to, to make organizationally or personnel-wise just to kind of make sure the things that happen under Jerry don't continue? Well, this is... Uh I don't know if I quite have 24 hours yet that I own this team, so uh, still evaluating things. Um, in general, um, like I just said, I like to have an open environment, a big one big family environment uh, where everybody feels safe like a family. And that means you can come up and talk to people and there's gonna be you know, just openness on all sides of this organization, on both the football side and the, uh, and the business side. Eric, go ahead. Eric Spanberg, oh, there we go. Eric Spanberg with the uh, Charlotte Business Journal. Um, you made a reference to development uh, when we were in Atlanta, uh, and all of us have been speculating ever since. So can you talk a little bit about future uh, practice fields, training camp headquarters, those kinds of things? How will you approach that? What's your timeline? Well, um, I think, I don't know who wrote the articles about practice field and this being one of the few places that doesn't have new practice fields, obviously we're in need. Um, so I think a lot of these things can't be done independently. I can't talk about a practice field without talking about um, new stadiums. And, you know, and uh, as I said before, I view this as, you know, a Carolina Panthers in both states. So we have to think about where we're putting things and, and where we're putting things. But. Um, you know, one of the things I did say that uh, winning is important. Um, one way or another, we have to make the, can't be less than competitive with other NFL teams. And at this point, uh, you know, given our practice field and what other people have in the league, we're falling behind a little bit. So that's um, because I do view the football side. I, it, it, this is a business, don't forget that. Uh, you're the business guy, I guess, in the room here, so. Uh, but the football side is very important, and winning is, like I said, very important, you know, on the football side, and I mentioned the community side. But uh, one of the aspects is that we don't, uh, we treat our players right, and we don't have any disadvantages to any other teams in the league. So, you know, top priority would be thinking about that practice field. Jordan. <coughs> Uh, welcome, Jordan Rodriguez with Charlotte Observer. In terms of a revenue standpoint and, and modernizing this organization to compete with the league around it and the world around it, what are some of your ideas, your ingenuity as you come in and, and kind of 
get an overall view of this organization? Um, so, you know, we have, you were talking about more of the business side again, I think so. Um, look, we have a, just a, a law that was passed just recently, and it's not yet hit the Carolinas, the whole gambling aspect. Um, and you think about the fans, and you want to keep the fans in the building. Eventually, it's going to hit, you know, North and South Carolina. It has to, from a revenue standpoint. You have issues with, uh, you know, paying teachers and other things down here, and, you know, tax revenues. So it's, it's just inevitable. Um, when we're thinking about these things, we have to take that into consideration because, you know, I want to make sure fans are in that building and sharing this team. And I don't want fans not in that building. So we have to, if the things come, so, you know, we're, we are, you know, sometimes you get lucky when you don't think you're lucky. You know, so one of the things we're lucky is that we do have an old stadium that we have to redo. We do have an old practice field. We don't have, a, you know, we have to, new practice fields. And along those things, with some of the changes with the, uh, the gambling, you know, we do have an advantage that we can think about what fans may want and to make sure they're in our building to cheer this team on. Because I do think an active fan base, I do believe that uh, the fans are the, the 12th man on the field. Okay, and I want to make sure that 12th man is in that stadium. So, like I said, some of those things where there are revenue producers, there's other development here. You know, if we do uh, move the practice field uh, to some place other than right next to the stadium, which doesn't necessarily make so much sense, um, you know, you do open up a lot of area for development and other development here, and there's going to be the new Amtrak station, uh, uh, you know, it's just up on 4th Street, I guess, where the Greyhound station is, if I got that right. So I'm thinking about those sort of things. And, um, you know, all these things are, um, you know, you know, everything goes hand in hand in, in, this, in this community. Um, you know, and it's not just uh, the business things. It's a matter of also things like high school games. And I kind of think that high school championships should be played in that stadium. That's what I think, okay, because that's part of the community, bringing that in the community. I also think that there should be more. I'm not, I don't want to screw up the field, but I think there should be more bigger events there, like, um, you know, you know, the right type of concerts, okay, um, in that stadium that there really hasn't been. So I think we'll, I want to utilize the stadium a lot more for the community because I think that's important of being a member of the community. So, that's that. Katie? Uh, good morning, Mr. Tepper. Um, I know that you said that you are on board with a lot of the recommendations that Mary Jo White recommended be implemented uh, league-wide. Um, those recommendations, including the prohibition of the use of non-disclosure agreements to limit uh, violations of workplace mi misconduct, uh, will be reviewed by the league. Um, here at, within the Panthers, will you implement those recommendations regardless of what the league decides, specifically the non-disclosure agreement part? Specifically not. Listen. Whatever was, was, this is now, okay? This is going to be an open place. So there's not going to be, you know, you know non-disclosure agreements no matter what in this new place and that sort of thing. Okay, that was then. This is now. Okay, that was then. This is now. This is going to be an open place where people are going to have the right people to talk to to come up with problems. And by the way, if that problem, if, you know, if I do something incredibly stupid, they should be talking about me. Okay, that's the place. That's what this place is going to be. Okay? Ashley. Good morning, Ashley. My oh, is sorry, Ashley. I was looking over there. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Charlotte. In Thank you. Terms of the I'm sorry, were you with? I'm sorry. The Charlotte Post. Okay, the Charlotte Post. Okay. In terms of looking at the overall scheme of not only the city, but the relationships with local city government as well as county side of things, have you had a chance to converse or perhaps engage and start potential relationships with a fairly newly elected body on the city council side? Um. Listen, I really haven't had any extensive uh, conversations with um, governors and, uh, and such. Just a, had a very quick reading with the mayor, but that's about it. Uh, there's a lot of discussions to have about how we do things here. This is a, my view, this is a partnership. Hopefully, you not just with, you know, and again, I, you know, like I said, this is the logical place for the stadium. Um, not just with Charlotte, if that's what it is but also with uh, hopefully the, uh, the governor of North Carolina and the governor of South Carolina. And uh, even though I haven't really returned their calls yet, I'm happy to return the calls now. 
Um, it wasn't appropriate before I didn't view it. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about. And uh, I think um, there's some really interesting things from the development side for them and for me, for us, the Panthers, to consider. Okay. So. Um, let's go to Paul. Hey, good morning. Uh, Hi, how you doing? Good, nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you again. Yeah. I, I think there are, are two schools of thought when it comes to professional sports teams being supported by tax dollars. You have mm -hmm. those who say, you know, look, it's, it's, an, it's an economic driver. It helps the city. It's a crown jewel for a city like Charlotte. And then there's another school of thought that says, hey, a, a billionaire can support his own sports team. How do you approach that, especially as it relates to all the talk about a new stadium? If I, th let's just talk about what you do in here and what we're doing. If I, if I do, if I go and I put a, a development, I bring a lot of dollars in here and tax dollars in here and F&B dollars. If you have an F&B tax or a hotel tax or something like that, and I'm bringing that tax in there. I'm making that investment. I'm not asking for people who aren't using those facilities. So there's a lot of different ways you're talking about it. If I'm talking about people, you know, uh, you know, if we're talking about win-win situations, okay, it can't just be for me and it can't just be for them. So it has to be a partnership, and partnerships means win-win. And that's definitely possible if you, th if you think that way. So if we do, we do uh, development here that does new development that keeps people here, just not on stadium day, and we open it up for other things, and I make an investment in MOS, and I bring that in here, and I bring that many more dollars into the community, and that's businesses in the community, and there's more tax dollars generated, then that makes sense to split some of those tax dollars. That's not taxing people for, who aren't using those facilities, but they're using, those, the, they're using things that I'm helping bring here. That's the partnership. Let's go to Viv. I'm, I'm sorry, what's the My name is Viv Bernstein, okay. Sports Illustrated. Uh, I wanted to follow up on Joe Person's question and uh, ask you if you plan to do an investigation into all the folks in the organization who were aware of the harassment over the years, who aided and abetted and created that culture here that I don't know perhaps still exists. Are you investigating that? In my 24 hours so far here, you mean? Are listen, you listen, to? listen. I, I, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough the openness, the openness I plan to have this organization have, and openness and team, team, of this org, of this organization. I think there's been an atmosphere where the thing, this, this organization I'm talking more, the business side wasn't allowed to be a team, and they was not able to go up and talk about things. Okay, there's going to be no impediment to that in the future. There's going to be no, let me just say that again. There's going to be no impediment to that in the future. And whatever that means and whatever that brings, that will bring. And, and whatever falls, that will fall. That's all I can say, okay, on that. Bill. Hey, Dave. Uh, Bill Goff, Panthers.com. I guess piggybacking off of that and the structure, I imagine because you're not giving up your other job, you're currently looking for a president? If so, are you able to update on where that search is and, and what are you looking for in a guy who will be taking over the day-to-day -day duties here? Or a woman. Or a woman, correct? Or a woman, yeah. Um, um, look, I, I obviously uh, um, experience running a sports team is probably be number one in different types of experience like that. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, and, and, and also develop, you know, you know, obviously, you know, some of the obvious business things, um, uh, marketing, um, development experience of some sort to be able to do that, because as we talk about, there's probably a lot of development here. And, you know, I just want to make sure that the person's here knows, you know, the person I, and I know that the two, there's a couple of people I'm kind of pinned down on, but um, um, that they will be able to build a good team here. And also, also understand the philosophy that I just outlined to um, Viv Bernstein, um, you know, of openness in openness and a team team environment and one family. Okay, we're a family here, and I want to make sure people understand that that family is on the family includes the football side and includes the business side. That's where I run my other business. You asked about my other business. It's a family. Okay, this is a family, and the family's protected. And the family feels safe in here, in inside this building, inside this environment. So I'm going to look for somebody that kind of can make sure they have that vision, okay? Let's go to Jim. Jim Morrison, WGNC Radio, Carolina Sports Network. Speaking of football, you said winning championships. 
is your ultimate goal here. You come from an organization that's had three head coaches in 49 years. Do you have a vision of what they did there that you want to see implemented here to kind of speed that process up, like things that they did there that you want to take from that organization to put in place here? You know, you say speed that process up. It's kind of not speed that process up, okay? A certain amount of patience and let things develop. You're, you actually have, um, I don't want to give people too many compliments, but uh, you actually are blessed with a pretty good um, football side here. You know, a head coach that kind of understands and understands himself. Um, I appreciate some of the changes that were made on that on that staff side, in my view. I, I would have nothing to do with it, but I'm just going to appreciate it. I mean, I've Norv um, is, a, is a pretty good addition in my mind you know, on, the, on the offensive side, and I think um, Ron is an, he's a natural defensive guy, okay, just natural. I mean, natural like walking down the street and drinking water, natural. So I think you got to appreciate you got a guy that understands that he wants to have a strength in the organizations and bring in good people to do that. That's important. So I think that's kind of the things you like to see. Um, so listen, I'm not looking to do too much there. I think we got some good folks there. And, uh, you know, I know people always want to hear things that are bad or not, but I'm sorry, can't do it. So it is what it is. Let's go to Phil Orvin. Hey, Dave, Phil Orvin from WSOC in Charlotte. You were very emotional at, at the Carnegie Mellon commencement speech, and I'm wondering to what extent this process has let you kind of reflect on your career and, and yourself, and what did you find of self? Ask me that one more time. Uh, you were very emotional at, at Carnegie Mellon, and I'm wondering if this process, you know, if you're kind of in the business world, you're go, go, go. Has this process let you kind of reflect on how far, maybe how far you've come and, and how you've maybe grown as a person okay. and, and to what extent? Yeah. Um, well, back to that Carnegie Mellon, just we related to this, I mean, it was hard for me to get the words out, as I said there. I mean, I, you guys just uh, have to just understand my neighborhood. It was in uh, East Liberty in Pittsburgh. Was It was real inner city stuff. So, um, and I said, I think I said there that I didn't go to uh, a pro game until I was into my 20s somewhere. So just, you know, that whole idea, this whole idea is kind of crazy to me. And um, listen, I, you know, I, I really do, um, I, I know people, I really do, I am a person who has inner faith, okay? So I, I you know, I kind of wake up sometime and just say, thanks God, thank you God. I, I don't know. Uh, that it just is what it is, okay, for me. And I think, and I think, and I say, God bless America, because I think this is, this is a great place to be. And I'm, I'm, I think everybody in this room is, is incredibly lucky to be in this country. So those two things, you know, I do reflect on all the time, and, and my fortune, and I do things, do think of the different um, parts of my, you know, different parts of my life, because sometimes it seems like different lives for me. And I do appreciate. I think it gives me appreciation to help to do the charity side and you know where I came from and you know how people uh, lived and what happens in certain situations. Um, I think uh, you know I think my, my you know my high school class was near 800 going in and 500 going out, you know that sort of thing. And I think there's worse than that in some places now still. So um, you know I do think about some of this stuff and. Uh, um, Listen, I've been reflecting a lot about the football players here. Just I know you didn't ask me, but I'm just going to talk about this a little bit and, and some of these issues that somebody's going to ask me eventually. Um, um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's incredibly good guys here. I mean, really good guys that love this country, that don't get said enough. And, um, you know, and I think, you know, and, and, and good guys that are charitable on this team. I mean, you should see the, you know, I don't know if you guys appreciate and look on the website, the the organization that these guys and talk about the football players are involved in. So I think that, uh, and I hope to hopefully get a, you know more involvement from them. But there's they're already involved. Okay, they're already involved. I know it doesn't get reported enough. And I know it doesn't get said enough. But hopefully, we can start uh, accentuating the positive a little bit more, you know, around. So, you know, and I hope hopefully I can bring that out. And I. I Listen, I shouldn't, I'm going to be told by my press people that I shouldn't be saying any of this, but you know, you ever watch, I, said, I think I might have said this some other place, you ever watch Spider-Man? You know Spider-Man? I love Spider-Man. You like Spider-Man? You know, with great, you know, power comes great responsibility. 
So I think I have that, and I think our players have that too, and I think a lot of them appreciate that. So I don't know if that answers you. That's a long, you're not gonna, and nobody else is gonna get as long as answer as that one, so. <laughs> JJ. Hey Dave, Jonathan Jones with Sports Illustrated. You have been in the NFL now for coming up on 10 years. So you've, not necessarily the seat at the table, but you've had a seat at the table. Now that you have one of the 32 votes at the table, what do you consider to be the biggest issue facing football and the NFL moving forward, and especially as we look down the barrel of a new CBA in the next three years? Well, the CBA is definitely a challenge, and you know it always is a challenge. Every CBA is a challenge. I suspect this CBA won't be more of a challenge. Um, listen, I guess you know obviously CTE is uh, is a challenge. The, the the league has been on top of the issue, making rule changes. I mean, listen, I, you know, being a, you know, I still have Steeler gear someplace in my closet, so I'm just going to make that admission right now. So, but I have more Panther gear now. But, um, you know, Shazir, um, that was like a big shock. And I think some of the changes, there's constant changes going on in the league, and I think the league is really thinking about it and trying to address those, those issues constantly. And some of the different tackling ways you have to tackle and tackling penalties, I think, are going there. So I do think that's a challenge, but I think it's been addressed. Um, Tiffany? Hi, Tiffany Blackman over here. Oh, hi, hi Tiffany. At NFL Network, going back to what you were mentioning about positivity and then your time with the Steelers, Art Rooney spoke so highly of you. What will you take from your experience and time with him and, and apply here? Well, like I said, I was answering the football. I think the Steelers had a you know pretty good philosophy. Dan and you know Art had a pretty good have a pretty good philosophy on the Steelers uh, on the Steelers side, and uh, so I'll take you know those sort of lessons. Um, you know, I'll take the patience and letting things develop. I think, which I think sometimes uh, things are made too fast. I also have a personal great appreciation for things I don't know, and uh, as I mentioned before, that's not them; that's me. Although I think they are, you know, they have that uh, appreciation too. Um, listen, uh, obviously a great organization, um, and you know, it, it certainly is not a bad thing to be have been with them for nine years and kind of just make observations. So I don't have that much more to say than that. That that answers the question. Dan. David, Darren Gant, Pro Football Talk. You've been willing to make pointed comments to powerful people in the past. How will you support players if they have opinions that may not be in line with large sections of your fan base and your customers here? I don't really make that many pointed comments to that many powerful people, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I, I made some, you're referring to things I did during the campaign, um, but I've tried not to make any um, since that powerful person you're referring to has been the President of the United States, I really haven't said anything about it, except for a few positive things on economic policy, which again, you guys choose not to talk about. If you decide to talk about those things, we'll talk about those things, but people don't like to talk about positive things. Um, but listen, there's, um, you know, for my charity stuff, I'm a b big believer in social justice. Um, and I'm actually a big believer in you know the country and I'm patriotic. And uh, you guys, you guys know the pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. You know that for the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. What's those last? What's that last part? With liberty and justice for all. With liberty and justice for all. So that's what this is about. Liberty and justice for all. Okay. This is a most patriotic thing, going. So that's all I got to say about that. Um, we got time for two more. We're going to go to Kyle Bailey, and then we're going to go to Scott Fowler. Hey, David. Kyle Bailey, uh, WFMZ Sports Radio. Uh, in that same theme, um, you know, last week President Trump told his uh, rally goers there in Montana the NFL ratings were down 20 percent. Now, the extent to which that's true, I'll let you comment on that. But I am curious what you kind of see on the horizon in terms of. Uh, media landscape, media partnerships, because you know it is increasingly difficult to not just attract eyeballs but keep them there. So, you know that's something I've I think I've heard you talk about a little bit in the past. What do you see on the on the horizon for the NFL and really all sports in that front? You know, TV has been um, has been fractionalized, so to speak. So there's a lot of different media. So you're talking about TV ratings, but when you add up all the different, um, you know, social media, Apple, Amazon, that I don't think uh, football is being affected as any more or less than anything else. I also think this thing that we talked about a little bit before um, called gambling, 
that's going to make uh, ratings go down. I just have a feeling about that, okay? You may know more about that than me, but that's my feeling. So uh, football, oh, look, this is the best sport, okay, my opinion. I mean, I love this game. I love watching this game. I watch it games. I watch all kinds of different games, and it's the only sport talking about football again, and I know about you folks out there. But I can watch almost any team on any Sunday, okay, Cause I, and I just because it's entertainment and it's great entertainment. And while I love the playoffs of some other sports, it's not football. Okay, you watch a regular season baseball game and let me know how that goes for some other team someplace else in the country. I know I'm not making any cracks about baseball, so I apologize to baseball fans everywhere, so I know I hear about that. I love baseball, by the way. Roberto Clemente was my idol when I was a kid, just as an aside. But anyways, that's, that's kind of my feeling about that. Scott. Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer. Uh, there's a 13-foot statue of Jerry Richardson outside the North Gate. Do you plan to leave that as is or move it? Um, I'm contractually obligated to keep that statue as it is. All right, guys, um, photographers, we're going to take a few shots with Dave, and thanks so much for everybody for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Do I kick this? Oh, you got one. This is David Tepson.